Well, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this saw apart. Brand new, never been powered on. I'm just gonna see what's inside it. And I actually want the motor to build something. So uh, if you watch my channel, you'll see that I build all kinds of crazy things. And that's the whole point here. But I figured that if you're any like me, you might appreciate seeing what's inside something like this. So we can figure out whether or not it works for whatever you need to uh, have. So I'm just going ahead and yanking it apart. And we're going to see what we can find out. Looks like that's going to be a bit of a pain to get to. I'm going to have to take the guard off. I don't need the guard. But I'd rather not just totally destroy everything. I'll try and kind of do this reasonably neatly. If that is possible for me. Okay, so we want to loosen that up, and I'm guessing we can just keep on unscrewing that. Yep, that works. Oh, that's an interesting screw, a double lead screw across there. And I uh, can't really pull that out easily the way it is, but I'm guessing that will happen when we take this two halves of the frame apart, um, two halves of the case apart. Uh, I certainly expect to see that move out that way. Lots of screws putting the frame together, um, which is just fine, just fine. I was actually going to do this to a, a Bauer Harbor Freight saw, but uh, there aren't any of those available right now, so I decided I'd upgrade my machine to a Craftsman instead of a Harbor Freight interior. Um, I chose the Craftsman because, as far as I can tell, it does not have a brushless motor. And since I'm going to be powering it off of a uh, questionable power supply, I'm not going to fry any electronics on something that doesn't, that's just an old fashioned brushed motor. And so I wanted less features rather than more features. I did want a good metal transmission and case to mount up to my little CNC machine that I'm building that I need to be able to cut things off. So we're going to see how that works out. But, uh, Shouldn't take us very long to have this thing cut, uh, opened up and to know whether or not I'm in luck or whether I just wasted 70 bucks on this saw. And that's all of them. There we go. Here is our innards. Oh boy. Not quite as good as I'd hoped for on the motor, but that will work for me. It is unitized enough. You can see we've got a motor. It's got a separate brush frame across there. I'll be trying to retain as much of the case as possible, so that will work. We also have a motor holder that's bolted in to the gear case across there, and it does have a metal gear case. Um, we've got our trigger switch, which I certainly won't be needing. Um, and then we've got a uh, board of some kind probably to manage the lithium-ion battery on this particular case, but I don't know. Again, I'm not real worried about that because that isn't what I need on this saw. Let's go ahead and see if we can pull everything off of the, uh, off of the spindle across here. We've got a blade lock back here, so... Oh, yep, that'll be a reverse thread. Duh. We'll pull that off. And pull off the blade holder. Looks like we've got this pressed onto here pretty good. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that off. Um, boy, I hate to just break this blade holder off, but I may have to do that. Um, just because I don't particularly want to... Um, don't particularly want to yank everything apart across here and uh, risk not being able to press it back together again properly. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws that are going to hold the motor and everything into the housing across here. A nice little duct to dump the uh, air and it looks like a nice a fairly nice fan for cooling that motor and that should uh should do a fairly good job of keeping everything cool while i uh run this thing under unusual loading conditions 
um, actually much lighter loading conditions than this would expect to see in um, construction or sort of pseudo construction use um, which is what they say this is good for I probably wouldn't use it for that but we'll see all right blade stop let's see if we can get him off there we go thanks to my butterfingers we got that taken care of ah now we can get to all of the screws necessary to pull the plastic blade guard off it's a nice plastic blade guard but it's very plastic um and we'll go from there here we are Don't know why I decided to do this with a hand screwdriver, but I did. All right, I've got machine threads going into that metal gearbox, and then I've got um, sheet metal type threads going into the plastic on alternate screws. And I guess I'll probably be building all of those into my uh, piece of aluminum that holds everything. We'll just see how that goes. Um, there we go. There we are. Moving along. And just can't quite get all, all to everything here. There's still two screws I can't reach. I guess I'm going to have to get a little puller and pull that uh, pull that piece off there just isn't any uh, help for that so I don't think there's any way that I'm gonna pop that out with a screwdriver yeah, maybe no that's gonna require a puller you know based on what I'm doing with the saw I wouldn't recommend this for uh, someone who's tearing it down and then going to put it back together again, but I'm not putting it back together again. So, pop the spring off, and we are just going to break the plastic guard. Um, boy, it just feels wrong. But, wanton destruction is always fun, isn't it? Hmm. What kind of plastic is that? I can't tell. Look, I got one more screw this way. There it is. You can do it. Whoa, I did just notice I have Craftsman screwdrivers. Wow. Yeah, we're just breaking this sucker. Just for what you wanted to watch, right? Somebody struggling with trying to decide how to break into a saw. What do we have? Oh, there we are. Got a little retaining ring here. We don't have to break it. This little ring, little sort of a slip ring, split ring of some kind. There we go. You can see the little little ring there. Now we should be able to pop that off. And we should be able to get everything that is necessary across there. Blade guard removed, two screws to go, and our job will be as complete as I need it to be because I will have my little transmission and motor unit. And then I will sign off and uh, you can decide whether or not you like this saw but I think it's going to work admirably for what I want to do with it. And that is cut little pieces of wooden parts as they're made on a little CNC machine. There we go. All right, there's that uh, screw with that double-ended, almost a, almost a acme thread on the end of it. There is our blade gar or a blade lock which i'm going to remove i don't need a blade lock where i'm what i'm with what i'm doing that's interesting she's going to be a little difficult to still get out of this piece of plastic because of the way that case is but there is our 
main unit. I'll be snipping the uh, snipping the wires where they go into the board. Um, somebody out there wishes they could have this board, but not me. And that's just a brushed motor, so that won't be any problem to run with a uh, uh, straight off of a DC power. And no variable on what I'm doing. There is my my precious that I've been after. There's where the blade will chuck on to it. And we will retain our little bitty um, reverse threaded screw. And stay tuned to see what this turns into. It's going to be fun.